Since we are so close to the end, when Jesus said there will be many false prophets on pulpits, the prophecy of Isaiah 30 verses 9 and 10 that speaks of the end time churches is fulfilling right now. It says that this is a rebellious people, lying children, children that will not hear the law of the Lord, which say to the seers, see not, and to the prophets, prophesy not unto us right things, speak unto us smooth things, prophesy deceits. In this video, I will address the false prophecy that claims when Jesus returns, he will touch the earth and literally reign on earth for 1,000 years. Those preaching such things use a single prophetic statement found in Revelation as their only basis of fact. They use Revelation 20 verse 4, which says, And I saw thrones, and they that sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had they received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands, and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. First and foremost, nowhere in that verse does it say they will reign with Christ on planet earth. They are actually building a man-made prophecy by using one out-of-context verse, that is not how prophecy or even doctrine is defined. In fact, it says in Isaiah 28.10 that precept must be upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little. One major issue here is that in order for their claim of reigning on earth 1,000 years means there cannot be a single Bible verse that contradicts it. For if it does, it's a false prophecy. Well, the problem is, as I show in this study on my site, there are dozens of verses that speak of what happens before, during, and after the 1,000 years, proving they fabricated their prophecy out of their own private opinion. And what Peter says in 2 Peter chapter 1 is quite plain when it says that no prophecy of the Scripture is of any private interpretation. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. And when men speak such lies that are easy to expose by using Scripture, this confirms they are not being moved by the Holy Spirit. The patriarchs and prophets of old were moved by the Holy Spirit to only declare what the Lord already defined in His Word for each and every prophetic symbol found in the Bible. And if you would like proof, see this study I posted online years ago, wherein I define each and every symbol in the book of Revelation using the inspired scripture to define each symbol. And to make it easy for the babes in Christ, I underline the definition to the symbol in each verse. What these false prophets are doing is giving their own private opinion in direct defiance to God's explicit command. They literally claim from their pulpits that the Lord declare there will be 1,000 years of peace on earth, yet... They cannot give any proof from the Holy Writ to back it up. But this is not the first time such falsehoods have been declared by so-called men of God. It says in Jeremiah chapter 23 verse 21 that I have not sent these prophets, yet they ran. I have not spoken to them, yet they prophesied. And again in Ezekiel 13 verses 6 and 7, the Lord said that they have seen vanity and lying divination, saying, The Lord saith, and the Lord hath not sent them. And they have made others to hope that they would confirm the word. Have you not seen a vain vision? Have you not spoken a lying divination wherein you say the Lord saith, albeit I have not spoken? And just so you know, this 1,000 years of peace on earth is a false prophecy that needs to be embraced by billions if Satan is ever going to be able to pull off his grand finale wherein he causes billions of people to think he is Jesus Christ himself standing on earth earth when he appears in the coming days. And he will appear. Christian prophecy cannot be changed. This is also why there are so many rewritten or bogus Bibles, as I like to call them, wherein certain Bible verses are totally removed and man-made verses were added so as to hide the real prophecies of the Lord that expose the man of sin in Rome. There is one Bible that the Vatican hates with a passion that every Christian needs to get their hands on. Not only are all the verses still intact in this Bible, the original King James Bible even has a preface 
wherein they expose the popes of Rome as Antichrist in policy, nature, and theology. This is why so many new Bibles are being written in these last days, and they literally removed the preface in the King James Bible of today. Rome desperately needs to hide what's in the King James Bible. And for a quick expose on the Vatican's most popular Bible, the NIV, see this short video when you get time. If you take the time to watch that video, I am certain you're going to trash your NIV Bible so as to get the unedited King James Bible. But getting back to the topic at hand, does Jesus really touch the earth when he returns so as to herald a thousand years of peace on earth? Well, check this out. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 16 to 18 clearly says, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first, then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. The lies are sometimes that easy to expose. But as the prophet Amos said long ago, most people refuse to study Bibles today. And so the apostate pastors take advantage of them by preaching all sorts of lies so as to move them to worship another Jesus, exactly as prophesied. The clear and unadulterated truth is, Jesus will not touch the planet when he returns. No getting around that simple scriptural fact. It's right there in black and white. But as also prophesied, Satan will stand on earth and claim to be Jesus Christ incarnate. And because most don't study their Bibles, the enemy of souls will have his day of harvesting billions of souls onto damnation. That being the case, what did Jesus say his obedient remnant people must do when Satan claims to be Jesus Christ before this last generation on earth? It's found in Matthew 24, verses 23 to 27. Jesus said that if any man shall say unto you, Lo, here is Christ, or there, believe it not, for there shall arise false Christs and false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders, insomuch that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. Behold, I have told you before, wherefore if they say unto you, Behold, he is in the desert, go not forth. Behold, he is in the secret chambers, believe it not. For as the lightning cometh out of the east, and shineth even unto the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. In other words, if someone comes up to you and says Jesus is appearing in the desert or in the inner room someplace, you know, like Benny Hinn claimed on camera back on April 2nd, 2000, Jesus clearly said, don't go there. Because the simple reality is, if they say Jesus is on earth to set up a 1,000 year reign on earth when he returns, then you know for a fact, according to his Bible that he wrote, it is not the real Jesus. As I shared earlier in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 16 to 18, it clearly stated that when Jesus returns, we that are saved will meet the Lord in the air. He won't be on the planet at this time. And by the way, before I close, if you have a question regarding a prophecy that your pastor is teaching that your discernment tells you is wrong, if so, please leave a comment below or even email me. And perhaps I can make a short video showing what the Bible really says about that prophecy. Thank you for watching. God bless.